they may not like it but they should accept it hi guys welcome back to my channel today in this video i'm going to be talking about boundaries and why your family had hard to set boundaries and how you can fix that so for me i definitely i used to struggle very much in the past to set boundaries like i felt like i had to say yes to everything i felt like i had to please everyone to make sure that i'm re respecting their feelings i'm making sure that they don't feel bad at the end of the day i was the one that was stressed out and just like full of resentment because like i wasn't i felt like i was being taken advantage of in relationships and i felt like i wasn't doing what i wanted to do and a good example of that was even up to recently because obviously like setting boundaries is like it's kind of like it's something that happens with time and the more you do you make decisions the more you say no the more comfortable and easier it will be for you to set your boundaries something happened to me recently i went to a restaurant and i went by myself and they gave me a seat that was in front of the bathroom and like all through my stay at that restaurant i was like why did they give me this seat like i could have easily said hey i don't want to sit down in front of the bathroom can you give me another seat and that's literally an example of um the results i would have had if if i set my boundary because 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 they would have either been like hey oh yeah sure we can definitely sh change your seat for you or i could have been like or they could have been like oh sorry this is the only seat we can give you right now and i could be like okay fine then i'm going to leave the restaurant if i don't want to sit here or i can sit there like it's kind of like like saying no sometimes it's just very hard and and I think this also, it also all stems from a lot of like deeply rooted issues, like for a lot of people, because I'm sure I'm not the only one that has had this issue or is struggling to like, to like kind of like exercise their boundaries. And definitely a lot of people grow up as people, people pleasers, people that are very compliant. Like I used to be a very, like a very compliant person. And uh, this is from reading the book, like Boundaries by Henry Cloud. And this book is really, really helpful. Is that is definitely a must read. I rec highly recommend. And in this book, it basically talks about different types of people with boundary issues. So there's the compliance, there's the aggressive, there's the non-responsive. So it's really, really informative. I'm just looking at my notes here. And there's also the manipulative controllers. So essentially, I found that I fell into the compliance category where I tend I tended to um make decisions that made the other person that 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 valued the other person's feelings above mine and and then yeah it's a very horrible like mindset to have or to be in so i definitely knew that i had to fix this issue so i definitely knew that i had to fix this issue and like i said like this issue is always deeply rooted in a lot of like childhood childhood um things happen in your childhood like childhood trauma or just like having a need for love or, or approval for various reasons and these things need to be addressed because when you take these issues into your adult life you end up making very bad decisions and that's why i think it's really important for everyone to work on their emotional boundaries and work on their emotional intellect so yeah so in this video so in this video, I'm going to be talking through two different scenarios and I'm going to be talking about, and I'm going to be using the framework that I learned from this book, Boundaries, essentially how to break down, um, and essentially this will help you to make, to make the right decision and make it easier for you to say no when needed. So yeah, so let's hop into this first example. So the first example is accepting a friend's invite to go out to eat when you don't want to. So I know a lot of people have definitely been in situations like this where they're invited to a dinner or to an event by a friend or someone that they are well, that, that they have a good like rapport with. And you feel like you have to accept this invitation because like if you don't, maybe they're going to like isolate you from the friend group. Maybe you feel like they're going to reta retaliate against you or you feel like they're going to stop being your friends because of that. So it's just like there are a lot of driving reasons as to why um someone would say yes to something when they don't want to. And that is the first question in this um template. In this kind of like um analysis, the first question is 
what is your driving motivation what drives your what is your <clears throat> what is your motivation what is driving your decision is it fear of missing out is it fear of losing friends is it fear of not being approved as if you have not been approved. So in this situation, you, like, like I can say me, I can relate to it personally. And like, I can definitely say it was, was definitely a fear of missing out. Like, obviously when you have friends, you like to hang out with them at different scenarios. But like, if you have commitments, if you have things like they're walking towards, like, let's say you have a savings goal. So you are budgeted out what you're spending for that week. So you can't really accommodate any like impromptu, like, gatherings or any impromptu like expenses and you have to exercise your boundary and be like hey this is my boundary i can't really spend that much this week but maybe we can like we can reschedule this for someone sometime else and before in the past because i had the phone like i'll be like oh yeah sure i'll just accept anything and i would essentially just put my savings goal down the drain and this is because my my motivation my drive the driving factor for my decision was the fear of missing out so essentially i felt like because if i didn't hang out with these people maybe the relationship will start fading or maybe they'll stop liking you and that is something that it's kind of you have to it takes a while to fix that kind of issue but essentially you have to know that okay if i say no to these people and let's say worst case scenario that these people don't want to be friends with me anymore and they kind of distance themselves from me do I have people around me that kind of have unconditional love towards me, like family or friends, siblings, wh whoever that I can turn to when other people kind of reject you or kind of other people kind of like disappoint you. So that's the kind of the thing. You have to know that you have a safe space in order to be able to reject um, opinions or decisions or suggestions that don't align with your values and priorities at that moment. The second thing is, are you harming the person or are you hurting the person? So this, uh, this I also got from the book Boundaries as well. So this is a really good way of framing it. So let's say for example, a friend has an event and is overseas. So you have to travel. However, they're not able to cover your expenses. So it's kind of like, okay, I'm not able to travel to come to your event because I don't have the resources to pay for that, for the, for travel right now. So it's like, okay, yes, there would be the person that invited you would kind of be, they would feel bad or they will feel bad because you weren't able to make it. So they would definitely feel hurt. But are you harming the person? Like, did you intentionally do anything to cause any physical or mental harm to the person? No, you didn't. You just exercise your boundary because... You obviously have, you need to, because obviously you have other needs for this, for your money. So you can't, you can't use that for their, you can't use that to go be, to go attend the event right now. And that is exercising boundaries. Like, yes, even, th even if like you wanted to travel and see that person, you have to understand that like you have prior priorities that you have to kind of like meet at that moment and that really helps you from make from being at peace with the decision you make and especially being at peace with saying no right so so these are two main, two main questions to ask what is your motivation uh and are you harming the, the person or are you hurting the person so the next thing to do like moving forward is like if ever if you ever if you ever find yourself in this kind of situation next thing to do the next thing to do after you ask these questions to yourself is 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 identify what your values and interests are so obviously you you definitely have interest like are you interested in going out to eat uh you can be interested but is that something that you value right now does that align with your priorities, with your commitments? And if both of those answers, if either of the answers of any of those two questions, of those two sections of this question is no, then you don't need to accept that invite. You don't need to make that deci that decision to go out, right? Like you have to, ha you have to be interested in going out to 
to eat with that person and you have to value and you have to align with your values essentially so once you answer these two questions and the and both knows so the next thing to do is to communicate um your communicate your um next thing to do is communicate your commitment to that person like hey i would love to go out to eat but however i have savings goals i i'm saving up towards buying a house buying a car so i'm just putting away every single dollar that i can and i can't really afford to go out to eat right now and essentially just communicate that or even if you don't have a savings goal then be like hey i'm not really feeling like it right now can we maybe maybe you could do it another time just being clear like hey like i really don't want to do this right now and the person should be able to respect your your um your boundary because that's essentially a boundary saying that you are not able to do this right now that's a boundary and essentially someone can respect your boundary they may not like it but they should accept it and they should respect it and if they're not able to do that then you don't really have any any business like being in a relationship with someone that that can't respect your boundaries you are not responsible for how another person feels you have to prioritize your own feelings and your boundaries above other people's other people's feelings because you can't really control the outside world like this is you like um, you are in this this circle you can control the the decisions you make how you feel but you can't control how other people feel so if if the if a potential repercussion for saying no to someone is that the person stop being friend if saying no to someone means that that person will stop being friends with you then you have no business being in that relationship you have to let let them go because when you start exercising your boundaries the right people that respect your boundaries and have similar boundaries with you come into your life if you continue to compromise your boundaries and allow friendships and allow decisions to be made that you didn't want you that stuck being with people that don't allow don't align with your life values being your life and it makes it hard for for the decisions and the outcomes that you want to be in your life you know so yeah so that is the scenario one so the second scenario is accepting multiple job offers at the same time so this actually happened to me so i think a few years ago i just graduated from university and i was like looking for a job like the hustle to find a job and i ended up getting two job offers about around the same time and and before i i accepted any either of them i knew that both of these offers were coming in so and i ended up accept, accepting these two offers knowing that i will have to go back to reject one of them and looking back like i would say my driving motivation for this decision was because i was scared of losing any opportunity you know like i don't know if you've heard this scene where you're trying to catch a rabbit and if you're trying to catch two rabbits at once you don't you end up don't cut you end up not catching anything that was essentially what happened and it was, i felt like because i was i was finding it so hard to find a job and i just really wanted to have a stable income that i felt like i needed to accept both of these offers and the thing about the two offers is that the fact that i needed to even accept both of the offers showed that none of them even aligned with my values and my interests in terms of my career because the first option was a job that was based in my city however the pay was significantly low like it was actually very insulting the second job was i had it required me to relocate to a different city which i didn't want to to do however they were offering more more offering me more money so i was like so at that time like it's so much sense i was like oh so i can combine the first job offer because i want to stay in the city i'm in currently but i can also take the other job because they're paying me more so it's kind of like you feel like you're actually getting two in one but you're actually getting nothing and i ended up working the first job and after a month or so i had to leave to work the second job because obviously it required me to to move and I, although I, did, I didn't want to move so that brings me to the question like and that also brings me to the template like i was saying like my driving factor for my decision was the fear of loss the fear of missing out or just the fear of like not having a job right 
And I had to realize that who am I harming? Am I harming anyone versus am I hurting anyone, right? Which is the second question in this template. Me rejecting a job, essentially, even, yes, I went through the whole interview process. I had two, two sets of interviews. Yes, I went to the very end and now, and I still have the right to decline the job offer if it doesn't meet my values. And that was something that I kind of struggled to accept. And I felt like, yes, because they are, because they offered me a job offer, I had to accept it, but that's not how it works. You're not required to accept anything only as far, obviously when you sign a, a job offer, then it's kind of official. But prior to that, like it's not official. You have every right to change your mind. And that was something that I was still trying to understand because I was so desperate to get the job and I felt like I had to accept anything that was offered to me. So yeah, like, so yeah, so if I rejected, so if, if I when if I would have rejected these jobs, like maybe they would have felt like I wasted their, their time, but I wouldn't have hurt them and they wouldn't have hurt me. But because I felt like, oh, I was because I felt like I was going to hurt them. I was I felt like I was wasting the time. That's why I had to accept the, the job offer. I did I ended up hurting myself because I was put in a situation where I had to balance two jobs that weren't even the best options for me. So I was in a very low mental emotional state in my life. So it's kind of like you don't that's why it's pointless to settle for things that don't they don't meet the criteria criteria that you have for yourself. So the next so just looking back, I the things I would have done differently after after analyzing my motivation and analyzing the hurts versus harm scale is to next thing is to be honest with myself and yeah identify what my interests are in a career identify what I value in a career. Obviously, I value being in the same city I was then, and that is a body that is a boundary. And if I exercise that boundary, I wouldn't have had to accept the second offer because it would have required me to move right and in terms of interests like obviously i like i wanted my interest in my career is like i would love to work on a product that impacts millions of people and i'm able to generate um i'm generate i'm able to generate gross revenue for the company and in the first job like i didn't really have the opportunity to do that so none of the jobs met my interest or my values in in my career so the right the right decision i should have made was to say no right and if i didn't more clarity on that decision i could have also talked to a lot of other people like in the in that field or just people with more career experience and they could have given me some more guidance as to what i should have done and i did do that but it was after i accepted these job offers so just looking back please don't do that right so so like i said you identify your interests and identify your values and if those, if the, if the decision does not align with your interests and values, then you, you reject it. You say no. And this is where you have to communicate your values to the other person. Be like, Hey, thank you so much for the job offer. Yes. I know that it took, it, it took, it was weeks of interviewing and just waiting for and um, back and forth. However, I just realized that this job does not align with my values and I'm going to have to decline this job offer, but thank you so much. Maybe we can work together in the future, blah, blah, blah. No, not the whole draw. And that's something I should have done. And when you communicate that, I'm exercise, exercising my boundaries like, hey, this doesn't meet what I want. I don't want to allow this job. I don't want to work this job. So I'm going to exercise my boundary by declining the job offer, which is really simple once you analyze, once you think about it using these questions. That's pretty much how you exercise your boundaries, especially in uncomfortable situations when you need to say no. So hopefully this was helpful. Maybe I'll create a, a template because you know, I love creating templates. So maybe I'll create the templates on like, like a decision matrix as to when to say no. And hopefully this video also was helpful in just like analyzing your thought process. What is your driving factors, driving motivations, I mean, and what's is the best decision for you. So you don't end up having to balance multiple options that are not even the best for you. Yeah. So hopefully you like this video, please like, like this video, share it with your friends, and I'll see you in my next, in my next video in this series of personal development and emotional intelligence. Hey guys, it is currently 3.30 AM my time, and I'm just finishing up the editing for this video. 
Well, I decided to create the decision tree diagram where it essentially just summarizes all the information I shared in this video. So if you need any like real time help in terms of like just find you're finding how to say no and you're looking for like like a step by step thought thought process breakdown, I thought like this decision tree diagram will really help you just go through that so you can feel more confident in your decision or whatever decision that you make. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video and yeah, peace.